ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತಿಮಿರಾಂಧಸ್ಯಾಂಜನಾ ಶಲಾಕಯಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿತೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದ ಕಮಲಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪಂ ಸಾಗ್ರ ಜಾತ ಸಹ ಕನ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸ ಜೀವಂ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹ ಘನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯೆ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯೇವಚ ಅತೀತ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ನಮೋ ಮುಖಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲಂ ಪಂಗುಂ ಲಂಗಾಯತಿ ಗಿರಿಂ ಯತ್ ಕೃಪಾ ತಮಹಂ ಅಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ದೀನತಾರಿಣಂ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾಧವಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮೀಶ್ವರಂ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸ I can uh today we will uh thought we will delve into or uh, discuss something about um, maharaja parikshit and uh, shami krishi so uh, shrimad bhagavatam starts with this past time and uh, i mean i was seeing the news uh, yesterday i think two days ago uh, there was a thing that uh miss mississippi the person who won the miss mississippi award she is exp- she was expecting her second baby they announced it in the uh, facebook and then she, they had a 2 year old son and uh, uh, the husband is shot dead before the 2 year old son and that's the news and that's why they hit the news and then yeah by a 17 year old fan or something like that then there is another news uh that uh, uh, you know uh, there is some teenage tra- drug trafficking human trafficking and then uh, you know they they somehow found out a big racket that 17 16 to 20 year old how they have been trafficking and what was happening to them and all that and then again if the next day if you open the news uh, there is two people the very very influential uh, you know cinema stars or something but then what's going on in their uh, private life 
uh, they have given uh, i mean they are not they have uh, very sweetly ended their relationship because of something 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 and then what's happening before that so imagine i mean we are living in this world and every day when we turn on the news uh, this is what's happening whether it's india us canada japan croatia russia there's so much tension now who's who is going to fight who russia or ukraine and you know the west is predicting that and ukraine is in fear and what's russia thinking we don't know what is the impact of these news in us like line after line after line and then imagine if we read 10 news articles like this what would be the impact i mean at least for me i hear a bhagavatam class for 1 hour and then i i try to take home some points and then the mind hardly dwells on what i heard but if for a 2 minute news i read or see something uh, that stuck in the mind so this is the influence of uh, kali yuga and uh, i mean the 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 what people only uh, you know the cinema stars and very uh, uh, you know high end people were doing those sinful activities in the 50s and 60s are now very common even the you know anybody is doing that so we can see the as as and when the years are increasing kali yuga is uh, i mean gripping gripping on us gripping on the situation around us and then uh, you know everybody is being helplessly tossed in this uh, the very the fact is that we don't even know what's happening what's going on in the mind and at the same time we can't live in this world oblivious to what's happening around so what's the solution so that's why shrimad bhagavatam says uh, uh the kali yuga is like a dark uh, uh, well or a dark room in a completely dark room you can't even see your own hand so there is uh, 90% chances that we might stumble upon something we might fall so many things can happen in the dark room for us i mean there is no there's very less chance that we would be unhurt so similarly simply in kali yuga the darkness that has engulfed in the form of ignorance people don't know what to do what not to do and they are doing all sinful activities and the result is jagannya guna vrittista ado gachanti tamasah so going down for a very dark future in the next life either to uh, you know hellish planetary systems or to lower forms of life that's what bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam says so in this dark age of kali shrimad bhagavatam uh, is a light pura narko aduno ditah so for this dark age of kali where everything is total darkness and then uh, i mean if one, without shrimad bhagavatam there is no light to see uh, why, why am i here what am i doing and what am i going to get out of it uh, where where is my journey taking me uh, there is no uh, clarity so that's why shrimad bhagavatam is called the light of the a uh, scriptures and it brings uh, drives away the darkness of kali yuga so here uh, i mean in kali yuga in the news we will see the interaction between two uh, men and uh, two countries or two uh, you know even between husband and wife or mother and the child and i mean it is uh, fully uh, you can say that you don't want to hear about it anymore it affects the consciousness like anything here we'll see interaction between uh, this is the antidote studying shrimad bhagavatam is the antidote uh, for the all the panacea in the world and also in our mind so here uh, we can uh, observe 
uh, the quality of the interaction between two great devotees, Maharaja Parikshit and Sami Krishi. So we know the story how Maharaja Parikshit um, is uh, cursed, like he's going through uh, his, um, yeah. So when he was hunting in the forest, he became very tired uh, because he was practicing his hunting skills because a Kshatriya has to practice that so that he is uh, responsible to give protection to people. So at that time, he entered, uh, he was searching for water for a long time and then he entered a, a sage, a sage's uh, ashrama, hermitage. Uh, there, uh, the Muni is completely in um, uh, his in trance. So he has no thing of what's going on outside. And here is the king who's, uh, whose palate is dry and he desperately wants water. So even now we can see that, you know, if someone comes home and asks, like, can I get a glass of water or something to drink? Uh, definitely, even in, the, in this degraded age of Kali also, we would, you know, provide uh, some water or some something to quench their thirst. But the king uh, was not uh, received anything and his request, uh, he was not invited, he was not given a seat or he was not given water or anything like that uh, while he was uh, while he was very hungry and thirsty and tired so thinking that he has been neglected he became angry so uh, at that time what he did oh brahmanas the circumstances having distressed him with extreme hunger and thirst the king directed toward the sage his anger and envy, which had never before directed toward a Brahmana. So, not only toward a Bra uh, he has directed his anger and envy, being a Kshatriya, towards people who are causing uh, problems for uh, normal life, towards rogues and thieves, and towards uh, uh, the Kali personified uh, who was hurting innocent people. But never towards a brahmana so how come uh, and even though he is it is said that here the circumstances having distressed him with extreme hunger and thirst and in the purport in, in the following verses Srila Prabhupada writes that a pariksh, for an ordinary person it's okay to be distressed by extreme hunger and thirst but not for a first class devotee like Parikshit Maharaj, because in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, when he just starts saying this, it's uh, he says, uh, you know, Dehi no Sminyata Dehi, Kaumaram Yavanam Jara. After that, the next thing is Matra Sparshastu Kaunteya Sita Ushna Sukha Dukkha Daha. Practice tolerance in the wake of dualities. So, whether it's hunger or thirst, even in the a person who is in the beginning of the spiritual life is advised to practice tolerance. And what about a person uh, like Maharaja Parikshit? And what is the specific quality of Maharaj Parikshit? When he was in the womb of his mother, he had tolerated extreme heat of the Brahmastra. So even as an unborn child in the womb, he, was, uh, he had withstood the heat of the Brahmastra and, and the Lord protected him from the heat, of course. But he had withstood the heat. So he had tolerated the heat. So how is it that he could become distressed with hunger and thirst? And Srila Prabhupada writes it, that is by the will of the Lord. And otherwise, there is no proper explanation. I mean, I have retold the story to so many people. Yeah, Parikshit went there and because he was very hungry and thirsty and the, and the, and the sage didn't give him water and so he became angry. He's not like an ordinary person. I mean, in my case, yes, I can say that I would become angry with, with hunger. And that's why hunger and anger, we become hangry. They call it H-A-N-G-R-Y. So because, I mean, uh, we are at in the bodily concept of life and uh, neophytes. So 
but uh, Parikshit is not a neophyte devotee. So how it happened like that? So Srila Prabhupada says that there is a purpose for uh, devotees to have been put in trouble like this. So, uh, uh, so what he did, he uh, directed towards the sage and what he did, he picked up a lifeless snake with his bow and angrily placed it on the shoulder of the sage. This purport is uh, very good. Then he returned to the palace and Prabhupada is saying here, the king thus retreated the sage tit for tat, although he was never accustomed to such silly actions. By the will of the Lord, the king, while going away, found a dead snake in front of him and he thought that the sage who had coldly received him thus might be coldly rewarded by being offered a garland of a dead snake. In the ordinary course of dealing, this was not very unnatural, but in the case of Maharaj Parikshit's dealing with a Brahmana sage, this was certainly unprecedented. So it so happened by the will of the Lord. So tit for tat or coldly treating someone because we are coldly treated, it is uh, ordinary action. I mean, it's for ordinary people and not for uh, uh, not for one who is practicing uh, any kind of self-realization activities. So uh, having done that, what's going on in Parikshit Maharaj's uh, mind. So he's returning to the palace, right? He did that and he's returning to the palace. And uh, what ha what's happening while he's going back? Upon returning, he began to contemplate and argue within himself whether the sage had actually been in meditation with senses concentrated and eyes closed or whether he had been just feigning trance just to avoid receiving a lower kshatriya. So this is what is going on in the first instance when he put the snake, he thought that the sage has did not want to uh, invite me or, or even talk to me because uh, the sage is a uh, is in the in, in is first of all he's a saint he is beyond uh, the farnashrama system of brahmana and i am a lower than the brahmana a kshatriya i am a, i am in the kingly order i am in the lower state so the sage doesn't want to engage in talking with me so this is the reason. That's what uh, Parikshit Maharaj was made to think by the will of the Lord. But now after this action was done, immediately he's arguing within himself whether really that is the case that he didn't want to avoid a lower Kshatriya or was he in meditation with senses concentrated and eyes closed. So this is where Par Parikshit Maharaj is contemplating, arguing, and he hasn't yet come to a, a conclusion and he's going there. Uh, meanwhile, coming back here, we will see what, uh, what happened. Uh, that the sage had a son who was very powerful. And of course, he was uh, very young. And then he saw the dead snake in the, in the uh, shoulder of his father. And then he being completely influenced by Kali Yuga. So what he thought that how come and look at the words of him or oh, just look at the sins of the rulers who like crows and watchdogs at the door perpetrate sins against their masters contrary to the principles of uh, principle governing servants. The descendants of the kingly orders are definitely designated as watchdogs and they must keep themselves at the door. On what grounds can dogs enter the door house and claim to dine with the master on the same plate? So what is Srila Prabhupada telling in the purport is that Kali had been given a place to live by 
Parikshit Maharaj. In the previous uh, chapters, we see that you know he gave four places uh, to live, and then uh, so Kali won. Kali's formidable uh, enemy was Parikshit Maharaj. So he uh, went in. He influenced or took over the boy, and then brought about. Uh, did made the boy do something that would bring about uh, the death of Parikshit Maharaj. So the boy being rudely thinking like this, and he, but he was very qualified, uh, but he had no, uh, he was qualified in the sense he was powerful because of being trained in austerities and uh, yagnas and other places. He had the power in the heart, but the heart was full of pride. So when the heart is uh, full of pride and the hand is full of power, what will happen? I mean, it's a destruction to ourselves and the destruction to the world. So he took this matter and then he pronounced a severe curse that from the seventh day from now, a snake bird will bite. And then, uh, and this is, this is what he deserves for insulting my father. So after pronouncing this curse out of anger and, uh, uh, you know, immaturity by the influence of Kali, without thinking ahead, giving it to the modes of material nature, he went back to his uh, father's hermitage and he started crying loud. So out of grief. Then the Brahmana opened his eyes and he saw what's happening. And then he heard from his uh, son what had happened. So, and then what did he say? The Rishi did not congratulate his son, but on the contrary, began to repent, saying, Alas, what a great sinful act was performed by my son. He has awarded heavy punishment for an insignificant offense. So we can see what is the uh, feeling of uh, Samik Rishi. So he is telling that what you have done, I mean, it's my fault. Uh, uh, so he's saying that your intelligence is immature and you did not think properly. And by cursing the king to die, we have bought, uh, you have bought a calamity because in the absence of the king, there won't be any community welfare projects. There will be thieves, thieves and rogues all around. Women and children will not will be exploited and not be protected. So all these things, we would be, uh, for all these sins, we shall be responsible. And by the, by the, I mean, not only in this, the Varna Shankara, there will be unwanted population. So there will be degradation for generation and we are responsible for it. And uh, I mean, uh, the king is also called a representative of the Lord and he's beyond the laws. Uh, so how, how can he be uh, cursed to die? And also, I mean, a king like Maharaj Parikshit, what excellent qualities he has. He's a devotee. He has performed many horse sacrifices. And it is my, uh, he says that, you know, uh, when the when the when such a king is tired and fatigued, being stricken with hunger and thirst, he does not at all deserve to be cursed. It was my uh, mistake that I did not receive him properly. Then these two are very significant verses. He says, then the Rishi prayed to the all pervading personality of Godhead to pardon his immature boy. Just praying to the Lord who had no intelligence and who committed the great sin of cursing a person who was completely free from all sins, who was subordinate and who deserved to be protected. Why, why the Rishi prayed uh, to the Lord? The answer is this. It's a very significant verse and Tirashkrita vipralabdaha shapta shipta hatapi nasya tat prati kurvanti tat bhakta prabhavopi hi. So the, the meaning, uh, the devotees of the Lord are so forbearing that even though they are defamed, tiraskrita, cheated, vipralabdha, uh, shaptaha, cursed, 
ஷிப்தாக டிஸ்டர்ப்ட் பை நெக்லிஜென்ஸ் ஹதாக ஆர் ஈவன் பீங் கில்ட் அபி ஆல்சோ நெவர் ந அசிய ஃபார் ஆல் தீஸ் ஆக்ட்ஸ் சோ ஈவன் தே ஆர் தே ஆர் நெவர் இன்க்ளைன் டு அவெஞ்ச் அவெஞ்ச் தெம் செல்ஸ் நாட் தட் தே கேனாட் அவெஞ்ச் தெம் செல்ஸ் தத் பக்தா பிரபவோபி ஹி மீன்ஸ் ஆல் தூ தே ஆர் பவர்ஃபுல் இனஃப் டு அவெஞ்ச் தே வுட் டூ தட் and who is saying this sami krishna is saying this so if a uh, parikshit maharaj is going to counter curse my son at least he will be saved but this is this is what he said the devotees are so forbearing that even though they are defamed cheated cursed disturbed neglected or even killed they are never inclined to avenge themselves the purport is very beautiful rishi Sam- shamika also knew that the lord does not forgive a person who has committed an offense at the feet of a devotee the lord can only give direction to take shelter of the devotee he thought within himself that if maharaja parikshit would counter curse the boy he might be saved but he knew also that a pure devotee is callous about worldly advantages or reverses as such the devotees are never inclined to counteract personal defamation curses negligence etc as far as such things are concerned in personal affairs the devotees do not care for them but in the case of their being performed against the lord and his devotees then the devotees take very strong action it was a personal affair and therefore shami krishi knew that the king would not take counter action thus there was no alternative than to place an appeal to the lord for the immature boy so this is uh, the understanding of a uh, devotee uh, read what some more of this work it's not that only the brahmanas are powerful enough to award curses or blessings upon the subordinates the devotee of the lord even though he may not be a brahmana is more powerful than a brahmana but a powerful devotee never misuses the power for personal benefit whatever power the devotee may have is always utilized in service towards the lord and his devotees only so we can see that you know how uh, parikshit maharaj is able to is seeing that i mean not parikshit maharaj is seeing that shami krishna is seeing what parikshit maharaj would do and think see that is the glory of a devotee and only a devotee can understand what's going on uh, in another devotee's mind and uh, it's a big thing to be able to um at the at that moment to understand that this is for my personal defamation and this is uh, defaming the lord and his devotees and you know not take action on the personal defamation but take action when the defamation is directed towards the lord and the devotees so this is what uh, you know krishna das kaviraj goswami says in chaitanya charitamrita nija indriya preeti kama krishna indriya preeti prema so the devotee is always dovetailed his existence is dovetailed with the desires of the lord in fact i mean he has no separate existence than the lord not in the sense of impersonal merging but he is so merged with the will of the lord with the desire of the lord his senses mind and intelligence and his whole being completely detached from identifying himself but uh, i mean as a material identity but as uh, none other than the servant of the lord so for that case uh, you know he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't hold the sami krishi son responsible for what happened to him and he wouldn't counter curse so he had uh, uh, no chance but to beg to the lord uh, for uh, forgiveness of the immature boy so this is the this is the dealing that you know shrimad bhagavatam is bringing in contrast to the dealing of this kaliyuga yeah so what did the sage do the sage thus regretted the sin committed by his own son he did not take the insult paid by the king very seriously 
so he said that i did not receive him so although he might have put that it's not serious i mean it is not something serious because i did not give him water uh, he did that and that is that that is not something serious but but uh, but what was given to him by my son is deadly so yeah generally the transcendentalist even though engaged by others in the dualities of the material world are not distressed nor do they take pleasure in worldly things for they are transcendentally engaged so sami krishna is not distressed by the uh, by the snake on his shoulder because uh, i mean so that is the thing a transcendentalist is, is proved uh, not by, by the situation by the circumstances how he is uh, dealing with it so he was not distressed at all because his their pleasure or distress is not on the ever changing material world ever changing reactions of the material that the material world through different people puts us in circumstances some is awkward sometimes you know people glorify oh you're great you're that you're this and the next day you hear that how horrible you are or somebody gossiping that the third person and then the fourth person comes and says so this wave goes on up and down tata mana apamana yoho sitoshna shuka dukkeshu why it is say why it will go on because that's the nature of this world so many many times from the beginning to the end in the 18 chapter of bhagavad gita this is one a topic that krishna touches again and again the dualities of this material world but this he also gives a thing that how and uh, how uh, you know great devotees have uh, lived a successful life without being touched by the dualities and uh, how uh, by uh, reading this meditating this wishing to follow this and one day successfully following this we can also um yeah uh be freed from the dualities of this material world so continuing to see what's going on in parikshit's mind so 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 the goswami is continuing so parikshit is thinking due to my neglecting the injections of the supreme lord i must certainly expect some difficulty to overcome me in the near future i now desire without reservation that the calamity come now for in this way i may be freed of the sinful action and not commit such an offense again so we thought uh, we saw that shloka how she uh, parikshit when he started going parikshit maharaj he started arguing and contemplating within himself that whether the rishi was in trance or he did not want to receive a lower kshatriya but now coming of to his senses he understood that uh, okay this is my problem he is completely in trance and i have done something so i there is some difficulty that should come so let it come right now so that i can be freed from this sinful action and i will not commit such an offense again so this is what he is saying let me get something because i have done something terrible and what have i done this is what he is thinking i am uncivilized and sinful due to my neglect of brahmanical culture god consciousness and cow protection therefore i wish that my kingdom strength and riches burn up immediately by the fire of the brahmana's wrath so that in the future i may not be guided by such inauspicious attitudes so he is condemning himself for what he has done and uh beautiful purport shila prabhupad is saying that what uh, a devotee uh, thinks maharaja parikshit lamented the accidental um Uh, okay maharaja parikshit lamented the accidental incident and he desired that all his kingdom strength and accumulation of wealth would be burned up for not being engaged in brahmanical culture i 
think in another purport he says that how a devotee feels really bad if something is he is doing bad and he repents for it for not following the uh, lord's instructions and he he's ready and uh, i mean he's ready and willing to accept any reaction for what he has done immediately why so that he will not repeat that mistake again and for a small mistake we can see that you know if he is wishing that kingdom strength and riches burn up immediately then what kind of a devotee is uh, parikshit maharaj how detached he is and uh, you know how he is completely surrendered to uh, following the lord in all aspects so while the king was thus repenting he received news of his imminent death which would be due to the bite of a snake bird occasioned by the curse spoken by the sage's son the king accepted this as good news for it would be the cause of his indifference toward worldly things so he is somebody i mean he received the news because sami krishi did not come in person i heard in one lecture that he sent word through others and uh, uh, this is what my son has done and in 7 days you will die i mean it's not a good news if anybody would go get that news that would be the most you know the news that's a thunderbolt but then the king's attitude his his heart is that he accepted this as good news why because using this he can and why he is seeing this that is also very significant he is seeing this as a uh, as a form of the lord this curse krishna knew that i am very attached and it's very hard for me to give up my worldly attachment so he has given me uh, uh, the, he has come in the form of the curse so that i can uh, uh, detach myself from uh worldly uh worldly things so that was his uh thinking yeah see uh see as a devotee of the lord he could understand that the cursing of the brahmana boy although unwise was a blessing upon him being the cause of detachment from worldly affairs both political and social shamik muni also after regretting the incident conveyed the news to the king as a matter of duty so that the king would be able to prepare himself to go back to godhead shamik muni uh, uh, sent news to the king that foolish shringi his son although a powerful brahmana boy unfortunately had misused his spiritual power by cursing the king unwarrantedly the incident of the king's garlanding the muni was not sufficient cause for being cursed to death but since there was no way to retract the curse the king was informed to prepare for death within a week both shamik muni and the king were self realized souls shamik muni was a mystic and maharaja parikshit was a devotee therefore there was no difference between them in self realization neither of them was afraid of meeting death maharaja parikshit could have gone to the muni to beg his pardon but the news of the imminent death was conveyed to the king with so much regret by the muni that the king did not want to shame the muni further by his presence there he decided to prepare himself for his imminent death and find out the way to go back to godhead so that is the glory of uh, the two self realized souls um, interacting with each other and he took this as a form of the lord and uh, he took it that uh, you know i would use this to uh, detach myself from my worldly things and i would concentrate and because of that the sound incarnation of the lord shrimad bhagavatam was born and uh, yeah shamik muni i mean the way we can see that how shamik muni had uh, conveyed the news with such a regret that the king did not want to embarrass shamik muni so that that is the 
uh, understanding of the feelings of uh, that's happening between the self-realized souls that he did now nothing can be done and the muni also is sending the news because nothing can be done the curse is curse and he has to prepare for the death but both of them are not afraid of death but it was a muni's duty to tell him so he has told and the king did not want to shame the muni by going in person there so that is the and also further when the king is sitting in the uh, bank of ganges and um, shukadeva goswami and all the sages are coming so he's saying that how we are uh, uh, we are very low kshatriyas uh, hearing this see from the different parts of the universe there are a great sages like atri chavana shardvan arishtaneni bhrigu vashishta Parasara, Vishwamitra, Angira, Parashurama, Uthaya, Indra Pramada, Idmavahu, Medha Titi, Devala, Arishtisena, Bharadvaja, Gautama, Pippalada, Maitreya, Aurva, Kavasha, Kumbayoni, Dvaipayana, and the great personality Narada. They all came. Just by reciting these names of the rishis, sages, we get purified. So when they came, what did the king say? Yeah, this is what he said. Uh, yeah, so the king uh, humbly standing before them with folded hands, uh, he told them of his decision to fast until death. And he said that indeed we are most grateful of all the kings who are trained to get favors from the great souls. Generally, you sages consider royalty as refuse to be rejected and left in a distant place. So you sages coming here to meet a Kshatriya whom you usually consider uh, you know, royalty as a refuse and reject in a distant place, but you have come to see me. That's because of the Supreme Lord's mercy and your mercy. So we can see you know, how humble is uh, Parikshit Maharaj. And then he see, yeah, this is where he says that the Supreme Personality of God is the controller of both the transcendental and mundane worlds has graciously overtaken me in the form of a Brahmana's curse. Due to my being too much attached to family life, the Lord, in order to save me, has appeared before me in such a way that only out of fear I will detach myself from the world. So whatever happens, they see the Lord in that. Because without Lord's sanction, nothing will happen. So he has only uh, just accept me as a surrendered soul and let Mother Ganges, the representative of the Lord, also accept me in that way, for I have already taken the lotus feet of the Lord into my heart. Let the snake bird or whatever magical thing the Brahmana created bite me at once. I only desire that you all continue singing the deeds of Lord Vishnu. So clearly he's saying, and also he's asking this prayer. Again offering obeisances unto you, uh, Brahmanas, I pray that if I should take my birth in the material world, three things he's asking. I will have complete attachment to the unlimited Lord Krishna. This is the number one. Second is association with his devotees. Third is friendly relations with all living beings. So this is what is his uh, thing to the sages. And now, you know, by seeing this interaction between great souls and, you know, what is going on in the mind of the great souls, we are, uh, we can, uh, we, we hope to get uh, away from the, uh, the effects of reading the Kali Yuga news. And hopefully, this Srimad Bhagavatam will be, the light will come up and it will so much, uh, uh, you know, dispatch the darkness away that one day we will start to read this in the news and then we can, you know, the whole day can go in contemplation and meditation on uh, the great devotees of the Lord, how they interact with each other and how the Lord interacts with them. So this is uh, something I thought I would share today. Thank you all for uh, patient listening. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much for such a beautiful class. Uh, 
Thank you so much for explaining like how Kaliuga is like a dark well and we can't see anything and we would always stumble and uh, we have to, uh, in order to come out of this darkness, we have to take the light, the uh, shade of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which you mentioned, it's like a light of all scriptures and it drives away the darkness of Kali. And thank you so nicely you explained about uh, the conversation and uh, the uh, quality uh, interaction between uh, two great transcendentalists and pure devotees, uh, Sandhika Rishi and uh, Parikshit Maharaj. Uh, so much uh, uh, we learned today uh, by uh, uh, explaining the interaction, the attitude and how they deal with each other, their thoughts and everything. Uh, and uh, so nicely explained about all the devotee qualities. And I really like the last prayers uh, which you mentioned, like, you know, it's very important, like, uh, you know, we have to always have the attachment to the Lord and uh, association with the devotees and uh, friendliness uh, with all the devotees. Yeah, so beautiful class, Mataji. Thank you so much for going over all these uh, purpose and everything uh, so detailed you explained. I will definitely, um, uh, uh, will review them again. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. It's uh, for my own purification, yeah, by reading again, again, and again, and contemplating. Uh, in the association of devotees, uh, we hope to become a devotee too one day. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, devotees, uh, please, if you have any questions or comments, realizations, uh, please unmute or you can just type in the chat box or you can just um, raise your hand. Uh, Mataji, uh, do you mind like uh, uh, stop screen sharing so I can? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. I think um, um, so. Today, I think uh, we have a few devotees. Probably it's, they have some commitment, something. Yeah. But, yeah, no uh, problem. We will definitely uh, enjoy this nectar on uh, uh, Facebook. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mataji, maybe I can ask question. Um, like uh, mentioned here, like I'm just uh, taken down the notes. Like you know, Parikshit Maharaj contemplating, right? So, uh, he's. I mean, like he realized that you know whatever happened, it's like will of the Lord. Mm. Uh, so, but still, again, he was contemplating, like he's arguing with himself whether, like you know, really Sage avoided me, like he, like. So is that due to Kali effects or like uh, why it is like that? Yeah, yeah Srila Prabhupada mentions that, you know, that was, uh, of course, he says always that's a will of the Lord, will of the Lord. But if you see only one, as soon as he did that and while returning only, he's, contempl he's contemplating and arguing. And then uh, that scene is left there. And again, we are coming back to see how Shringi cursed um, mm. uh, you know, Parikshit Maharaj. So, and then in the beginning of the next chapter, we see that how he is condemning himself. Yeah. So he was contemplating and he came to a conclusion that he has done a very heinous and uncivilized act mm. against a Brahmana. So that is the that is the end result of his uh, contemplation. So basically, uh, that was like a passage way. Then he said that, okay, I did this. So because of this, I deserve something big. So he came to that uh, conclusion. But throughout in the purport, Srila Prabhupada says that Parikshit is not a person to behave ordinarily like this. He's not an ordinary person to behave in a tit for tat way or, you know, like that. So he says that, you know, it happens by the will of the Lord. But uh, the feelings of the devotees, you know, that's what is Bhagavatam is like. We can get an insight into mm. what they're... Uh, feelings are, what their emotions are, how they are surrendering to the Lord. Yes, Mataji, very true. I mean, whatever you went through today, I feel like, you know, we also go through similar kind of situations, right? Uh, we Sometimes we commit an offense. I mean, we don't really do good with others. And again, we think like, okay, we shouldn't have done that. Again, we start thinking, okay, I think... Uh, we start thinking, okay, I think maybe I did the right thing. So <laughs> we go through these uh, things and uh, definitely as uh, right, right. beautiful uh, purpose you have uh, shared today, Mataji. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mataji. <laughs>
Thank you. So, devotees, any questions, realizations, any comments? Uh, please do share. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Vrinda Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisance, Mataji. All glory to Shri Thank you so much for the wonderful class. And thank you for uh, this section. I mean, how many ever times we read, always there is something new realization in this part. Right. In the beginning, when we read it, it is so bewildering. I was thinking how Maharaj Parikshit could do that. And then, <laughs> but then slowly we get more and more realizations. And then we get to a point where, you know, we get convinced, okay, this is all Krishna's plan. And uh, I was also thinking that how these pastimes actually being in Krishna consciousness, we know that how we should take up these sufferings in a positive way because this is what Maharaj Parikshit wanted, right? He was thinking that something bad should happen to me and when it happened, he thought that it is a good news. So, yeah, this, I mean, this really... To say it's like strength we get in Krishna consciousness, how we should face because we know because I do something, I'm suffering. <laughs> so okay. Suffering is always good. <laughs> <laughs> Very this nice realization, Mataji. You summed it up wonderfully. <laughs> this is what I learned from your class, Mataji. Thank you so much. Uh, I just had one question in mind that then what happens to Brahmana Sanshringi after he curses because I don't know if that part is mentioned in Bhagavatam because it was a kind of devotee offense, right? Because he yeah. judged as the devotee. So what happens to him? Is it mentioned in Bhagavatam? Or... Uh, no, Mataji. I, I mean, uh, as far as I read the purports, it was not mentioned. But in one place, it is mentioned that... Uh, uh, the offense was by an uh, immature boy, like a child. Mm -hmm. So he was still considered a child. Out of childish nature, he has done that offense. So it was not considered that big an offense, like, okay. like a Vaishnava, like a willful Vaishnava. But this much I read uh, from one purport. I will okay. send you that. Okay. I'm not exactly. That makes sense because I have heard that until age 12 or 13, that it is not considered as devotee offense, right? So if he was very young, then if it was immature, then probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but what happened to him after that, I don't know. Uh, maybe in some other scriptures, it was it's mentioned or that uh, I'm not aware, Mataji. Okay, no problem. But I got some idea about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your association. Thank you for your time and association, Mother. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. Yeah, same thing, Mataji, with your Govinda classes also. Whether, whether Prahalad is concentrating or not, I would, uh, you know, make him sit in the kitchen only and I would listen. It's so nice. You're doing a great uh, Mataji, job. Mataji, my, the mind, whatever I teach it's nothing actually <laughs> in front of you all preaching it's amazing when i hear from you thank you well, we get purified <laughs> mataji by your realizations thank you <laughs> yeah thank you Rinda mataji thank you so much uh, uh, devotees any last minute questions for mataji Okay, Mataji, uh, okay. thank you. I really like the last point. I just wanted to share this, like how, uh, you know, great devotees, they lived a successful life without, uh, you know, um, attaching to the dualities of life. I really like that point, you know, by your uh, today's class, like it uh, helped me to understand like how to come out of this good and bad. I mean, at least I understood theoretically. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, even I'm hoping to understand by, you know, in all your association and uh, reading and contemplating this so much because what values and ideals are told in Srimad Bhagavatam in contrast to the Kali Yuga thing that we are used to is so apart, yeah. but it is so nice. So, you know, keeping that as a goal and contemplating that, like as Vrinda Mataji said, then we can learn some things yes. in our life. Yes, definitely. Yeah. 
So, Mataji, uh, thank you so much again for your valuable time and association, and we look forward for you more and more in the future uh, to thank you. your lecture. <laughs> thank you so much, Mataji. So, with your permission, should we end the call uh, here? Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for the opportunity. My humble obeisances to all of you. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Mata. Thank you, Mata. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mata. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna